whip that off and open that. That'll let the pressure out. That pump will have to be on the return, not the flow, as it shows in the instructions, because the paddle switch is going to hit across like that. That's all that does. So yeah, it's wrong in the instructions, that's why it ain't working. Right guys, welcome back to the channel, hopefully you're all doing well. A little bit of a jobbing episode today. I think the first one is a leak on a soil pipe behind the box and it actually turned into a bit of a pig of a job because I wasn't with two fixed points. We've got a problem with the Worcester boiler and there'll be a couple of other bits. I might do that electric boiler update as well that I promised a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, um, a little bit of a mixed bag today, but you know me, I like to try and vary the content as much as I can. So yeah, we'll crack straight on with it. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you straight in there. We pulled out to this one. Um, water's obviously coming out of this box in. We've got one toilet on that side and one toilet just behind me. So there's a set of three. I've just tried to pull this boxing up, but we'll have a look, see exactly what's going on. Obviously it's leaking quite bad. These are brand new as well. Obviously I haven't fitted them, um, but yeah, it's a lot of water in here. I think we've got mains water coming into the building. Uh, yeah, so mains water stop taps down there. Obviously you can see I ain't done it because it's all pressed. Um, so yeah, we'll have to have a look exactly where that's coming from. I've tried flushing the toilet. Can't see anything obvious this side. Best to put it in before the toilet went in, of course. You can't get out. Obviously that flooring's already been pulled off by somebody else, unless it's just fell off. Ah, uh, don't want to touch it, but yeah, it's leaking on that. Oh, sock it there, innit? See it's been running down. What I'll have to do is cut it, cut it, short bit of pipe, boss socket. I think that's what it's leaking. It's leaking out that joint. I'll see what bits I've got. We can get it sorted like, but just don't push the toilets as I'm doing it. Yeah, so it's definitely leaking there. You can see it on the floor, can't you? It almost seems too much water on the floor for that joint. Could it, I mean, it is. It, it is leaking. But as I say, it's gone. It's travelled a long way, hasn't it? Oh, there you go. You see it through there. So now I'll probably just cut it out. I have to cut it back up to here. Right, I'll have to use an orange slip um, just because the poly pipe ones have got the lip all the way around and you can't knock them out. It's behind the box in anyway, so I'm going to use a slip, short boss socket, uh, probably cut that there, get that in there somehow, and then I've just got a short piece of saw pipe. I'll cut this down anyway, and then literally I'm hoping just to slip along and pull it back. Because obviously I've got two fixed points, I've got a fixed point there, I've got another toilet that side, one through there. Um, so yeah, we'll just get it done.
obviously <sighs> that one will glue on but that one I need to try and chamfer um, so I can literally just slip it up and then back in but we need a piece of pipe we'll use the chamfered edge of that end So many somebody flushes the toilet in it. Cut that there off somewhere there. will go in there lovely for us. I can actually glue, glue that one on. Put plenty of glue on it. Don't want any more leaks. have to cut that boss off but we can sort that in a minute. Can't find my uh, silicon lubricant so we're using a bit of LBF. A bit of fairy liquid in it. It's good as that. I had to just take a nick off that because I couldn't get it in and I didn't want to break my fit in. It should be alright. <clears throat> I just have to use it to bridge that gap. It's not a lot. Nothing else I can do. I'll just let that glue go for a minute. Obviously I'll not put it quite to my mark because I cut the pipe a little bit shorter. But yeah, give that a bit of a flush. I think that should be alright. Obviously we just gotta make this basin back in. But I don't know what was leaking on the old bit. It's obviously just leaking on glue fitting at the bottom. Just need to get some pipe out of the round, but I'm just going to do it. Oh, I'll shoot on that back a bit more, but yeah, and then I'll just try and put the box in there the best I can, and that'll do it.
Right, that's got it all put back together. That boxing's going to need replacing anyway. I dropped a slight clang of the way I did that, but it's all swollen up. And obviously I can't put the flooring pieces back on, which slipped up, because everything's so wet. But yeah, you can see that was the actual epicenter of where it was leaking. It's obviously been tracking all the way across. But yeah, all sorted now anyway. My mate's come to a Worcester. He's just changed the radiator. And the fill link, I've never seen one. The lever snapped off. Well, it's not snapped off, but it's stuck in the open position. It won't free up. I think I've got a Worcester key link in here. They're the old, they're the old ones. Uh, they're the really old ones with the key. This is just my uh, thing of stuff. The question is, do I have a Worcester key link? Oh, that's one of the old ones with the key. Do you remember them ones? I think I've got one of the new ones with the blue leaf in. That one, that one will go in. But I'm sure I'll keep the new one. All sorts of crap in here. Have a look in the van. Have a look in the back of the van. I'm sure I've got one. That one with the blue lever. Um, say, I've never seen one. He's gone to fill the heating back up, and that is just the lever was so stiff. He said, and now it won't shut back off. So I just get that swapped out. I don't know why I've still got that one in there. That'll come in handy one day though, won't it? See, the link is just stuck open on that. The pressure's just going up and up. So we'll get the water turned off underneath uh, on the cold and then we'll isolate the flow returns and we'll just have to drain the boiler. We'll get that off sooner rather than later so it doesn't blow it out the PRV. Because then we've got the PRV to change in as well. Still got a bar to go. Yeah. Like one, one, one thing with Worcester valves is they do normally not leak. I've never seen that on a Worcester. Turn that one off. That'll stop the pressure from rising. Alright, best isolate the power, Jacob, and then we'll drain the boiler. On this one, the drain off is straight in the condense, so all we need to do is open that. Well, Jacob's going to do it because he can get some evidence for his gas portfolio. So we'll isolate flow and return, open the drain off, open that diverter, and then all we've got to do is whip that out and change it. Can you get them? They normally turn towards you, mate. What? Which way? Uh, so towards me. They'll only go one way. There you go. That was not the winner. Is it not? I thought it was. Well, I still the return on there because that valve. That valve don't want to turn, but the flow we can get. That's it. Twist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, twist it. Twist it towards me. And that should open. Sometimes a little bit stiff, mate. Sometimes you need to get the grips on it. There you go. That's it, the pressure should start to drop. Bit yeah, just open it's because that divert is not open, mate. Do just you keep twisting? No, no, don't keep twisting. Just Whip that off and open that. That'll let the pressure out. So that's got the boiler drain in. Um, and I say all we need to do is undo them Allen keys and just whip the new one in. So it's something I've not seen before then. It's obviously just gone. Pete Tong. Right, well, Jacob says in theory we could just get away with changing that piece. I don't know if they do that as a spare on its own though, because I've never done one of them. Uh, so I think we're just going to change the link. You got the right one, mate. He's got his weirer, weirer keys in. Looks like it's had a bit of a leak at some point. There you go. You're good. Give it a good wiggle. It should pull towards you. Just watch yourself. You don't cut yourself. It is a Worcester. We might be able to get a screwdriver in between. Yeah, there. once you get it, once you get it, it should come out. but we've got a tray underneath. It's 
So they're just held in by O-rings and the Allen keys. There you go, you're all right. It's just coming out of your return pipe because we isolated it on the filter. That's it. Uh, it's, it's not gone all the way home, but yeah, you, you're doing it. There you go. Beautiful. They're a little bit fiddly then, but not too bad. No, they're bad. They're bad. <laughs> Obviously, we've got to do our 26.9 checks on this boiler. Um, yeah, Jacob will get the cold on if you can. I've done that one, mate. Beautiful, that should fill back up. Well, oh, actually, when I opened the return, it had pressure, didn't it? Yeah, that's fine. It's warm, though. Sure, yeah, it's because we banged the pressure up. The pressure went a bit high, didn't it, before? Nice. Yeah, that's fine. So, I've never seen. Look at that, look. There's some crap in that system, isn't there? So we just gave it hot water to make sure the diverter valve turned up and that will drop back down into heating then it will shoot back down so we'll put the little green plastic cover thing back on <laughs> in case the flow turn by leaks should be job done Goes like that. This is the boiler, uh, the electric boiler, basically what it's not doing I think it could be the flow turbine um, but yeah, either way, it's not firing the pump. So I messed about with it on Friday long enough. You get a demand, it comes on for like two seconds, well, less than two seconds, and it's supposed to go onto this one, which then starts heating it up, but it doesn't. Um, so yeah, they told me just to swap it out. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. So either, it'll either be that relay, not putting it onto the pump overrun, or that. So make sure everything's safely isolated. As I say, we brought the armour in. Just got to get it rewired up, get the pipes done, get it all sorted. We should get it drained back down again. I'll empty the boiler and everything. Uh, I've got the pump valve, I've got the filter off, so it won't actually empty the system too much, I don't think. I'm going to start getting it stripped out. Right, I don't know what's going on with this. Um, I have just opened the heating valve up. I don't really want that on. So, uh, forget about the heat in a minute. That valve will shut. Um, basically what it's doing, it's not putting power onto the pump. I wonder, I mean it shows it on the flow in the instructions, but the pressure switch, gotta be careful because that's all live in there. The pressure switch is on the return. See it clicks on, pump starts, but it's obviously not proving the pressure switch, so it's not moving across or the flow switch. It runs and then just goes off. So you can hear the relay click on the board. But that, I can't see an arrow on that. But as I say, it, sh it shows the pump on the flow, but I'm just wondering if it's supposed to be on the return. It doesn't actually say in the instructions, which don't really give you a lot of help. But I've tried for any technical, as much use as, I don't know, chocolate fire guard. Um, can't get that back on one ended. I don't want to break it. So what I'm gonna try and do is flip that pump onto the return. But it definitely shows it on the flow in the instructions. See, it'll fire up. The pump will come on for less than three seconds. And then it's supposed to go on to heat, heat OK. Oops. It's supposed to go on to OK. And then it just goes E5. Um, so I don't know. That's the only thing I can think. Should the pump be on the return? I can't see. I honestly can't see which way that switch is going. The pump's running now. What? Well. I don't know what all these, any of these modes are. That one just seems to make the pump run all the time. <laughs> I don't know. So that one's demand, uh, which shows obviously we've got the zone valve open for the hot water. And the second it'll bring the pump on and then it will just go straight off. Uh, there's no air in there, that coil. Uh, I have tried bleeding it through there, but I know there's no air. There's a, I've put an auto event on the flow. See, so pump will come on. You can hear the pump. Uh, well, you can see the light on that pump as well. And it'll just go off. It's not proving the pressure switch. I might put the pump over there and see if that works. I don't know what to do. It shows it on the flow. 
shows the pump going into the two ports like that. And that one is definitely the flow, it's marked up heating and then backward inlet. So that they had the blue cap and the red cap on. That pump will have to be on the return, not the flow, as it shows in the instructions, because the paddle switch is going to hit across like that. That's all that does. So yeah, it's wrong in the instructions, that's why it ain't working. I think it did actually just try and fire up. And so there's probably nothing wrong with that. I could have, in theory, I suppose I could have flipped that paddle switch, I could have flipped that round, but you shouldn't really have to do that. This thing with a fire. It's building temperature up, but it did actually go okay. It sounded like there was a little bit of air in it. So that's why, that's why it's not working. So we just got a cycle in there, haven't we? And obviously there's no air tap inside the unit as well, so I've been bleeding it from there. Obviously it's got a load of air in here. But there's no, as I say, there's no air tap on the unit, so it's always going to wear a lot more air. I just keep bleeding it and see if it comes on. It did actually light, it went okay. Right, that's it up and working. Uh, I've got to walk the pipe work now. Well, it keeps going off, I don't know what's going on. I think it's picking up a bit of air in here. Flow's getting hot, it turns cold. I keep bleeding it through air. Uh, there's no, as I say, there's no air tap in the unit, so you're a bit buggered. But obviously, now I've put the pump there, it's obviously killed its path to vent. Um, well, it's not really vent, to the safety vessel. And obviously I'm gonna to have to rejig this in a little bit neater, but that's why obviously you get demand, pump should come on, that should go on. Um and then yeah, it should work, but God knows why they don't tell you to put the pump on the return. Nowhere in them instructions, obviously not them ones, because they're the cylinder instructions. Does it tell you to put does it tell you it shows pump on the flow? Uh, so unless they've assembled them wrong. Jesus the light, um that's why it's not working. Shows pump on the flow through the bypass into the zone valves. You shall did it. Right. Just let it build up to temperature. It seems to be working now. It's all the air's out of it. Flow's getting nice and hot. As he says that, it's air locked again, isn't it? Why don't they put an air tap on the top of these boilers? It's just a nightmare, isn't it? Right, now we're building up to temperature. I think we finally got rid of the air. Flow's getting hot. Returns well, get in there. It's only on hot water at the minute. So, hot water's up to temperature now on the cylinder start, uh, set at 60. Um, so, I think the heating will have a little bit of slug of air in it up the top and across. I've just been up and see, can't find any air taps, um, but there must be some, I guess. So, it might clear itself, it might not. I think there is a way just to get the pump to run on these, but at least it's working. Hot water got up to temperature really quick. Heating's running now, um, sounds a little bit airy but it's not actually interfering with the boiler. So I've only just got a couple of the radiators on at the minute just to try and get rid of the air out of it. I went up in the roof and I can't find any air taps, it's a nightmare to get across because the loft hatch is right over the other side of the suspended ceiling so I don't want to go treading too much because they've only like the thin lats. So I don't want to don't want to end up on the floor. Yeah we'll see if that runs, I'll go and check the rant in a minute. I can turn that one off. All the others are getting nice and toasty. I've just pulled it across this far end. We've mainly just got toilets and stuff down here, and then there's a couple of rooms off it. But they all seem to be working. Hot water's not done off. Hot water's just done off water heaters. The only thing that cylinder's doing is the commercial kitchens and some more toilets down that end. PRV just dropping straight on the floor like that, look. And what a joke. Genuinely, how did they get away with it? I've got some jigging around to do on this system now, I've already said, um, but I'm annoyed about that. Um, I rarely get annoyed. Um, I need to pick up a programmable start as well, that's the only one I've got. Um, but yeah, I need to sort this out now. Um, obviously, if I'd known pump need to go on the return, if it was shown in the drawings, pump on the return, that's how I'd have done it. But it shows it on the flow, and I spoke to technical. I spoke to technical on Friday, I uh, rang them at half nine and said they were, well, it just goes through a switchboard and they never answer. Uh, they said leave an email. Uh, they did, I did actually get all the sales, they, rang, they said they were going to ring me back, it took like an hour for them to ring me back. Uh, so it was one o'clock, um, potentially I could have twigged it, but it just, I just didn't realise. I said it was piped up to manufacturer's instructions. Um, so yeah, what, what do you do? You obviously... You obviously they're saying it's because the bypass valve is not set, so it's nothing to do with the bypass valve. They're saying it's just got air in it. It maybe did have a little bit of air in it, but that wasn't the reason why it wasn't firing. Um, 
not on a brand new, not on a brand new coil. Um, so yeah, it's sorted now. Everything's getting nice and warm. So I'm just gonna have to jig this pipe work around a little bit. But for tonight, it's got the pressure off me. Um, so yeah, we'll go home. I think. Right, I thought I'd show you that bit. Um, I didn't know whether to include it or not, but yeah, that's where we were with that job. I was thinking about it after. This is about a month. Th that was before Christmas. This is about a month later, a month, six weeks. And in theory, that should have worked with that pump on the flow because the paddle switch, obviously the water's pushing against it. I think the problem was that it was only putting power onto the PCB for literally about 0.2 of a second. And by the time the zone valve had opened, it had already gone to fault. Uh, so the pump had to be directly below that switch and um, that was the only way I could get it to work obviously I've not heard anything since so I'm assuming the heating and everything's still working um, but yeah as I say it was shown on the flow on the drawing I think they were just downloaded um, things off the internet and them schematics or whatever but yeah it was never it was never going to work and thinking about it the system boilers that they do probably the pump is on the return I mean you can you can do it like that but I did speak to technical and they said the pump was fine on the flow which clearly isn't it was clearly never going to work uh, the other thing obviously there was no air tap on top of the heat exchanger so that could have played a factor I mean I spent like three hours trying to get that going on the Friday uh, I just never twigged um obviously i was under pressure under stress and stuff but yeah it's is what it is you live and learn but as i say if technical don't help you you know you can't you know yeah you know how i feel um but yeah as always thank you so much for watching hopefully you enjoy this one and we'll catch you all next week